This conference will now be recorded. Well, good evening, everyone. I'd like to welcome you to the City Council regular meeting for February 21st, 2023. I remind you that the council meeting will be conducted in the traditional in-person format at the location uh, that we're at, City Hall, Council Chambers. Um, please note public comment will only be available in person during the meeting. The remote meeting access is for viewing purposes only and those viewing the meeting remotely will not be able to provide public comment via the remote meeting access, which is available, by the way, on our website if you don't know that already. Um, so off we go. Um, may I have a roll call, please? Alderman Ashour? Here. Alderman Berry? Here. Alderman Davalos? Not excused. Thank you. Alderman Goodman? Here. Alderman Krischel? Here. Alderman Kruckenberg? Here. Alderman Lockett? Is going to be attending remotely. Okay. Oh, okay, so he's not going to participate. Okay, never mind then. He's excused also. Okay. Illness. And Alderman Widener. Excused. Thank you. All right, thank you. Um, please stand as you are able and join us for the Pledge of Allegiance. We have a proclamation this evening. It is, okay, excellent. National Engineers Week, and uh, we always like to participate in this because we're grateful for our engineers here at the SUNY Long Beach. Whereas engineers have built the foundation for progress and development and contributed greatly to society by turning ideas into reality. Engineers use their scientific and technical knowledge and skills in creative, innovative ways to meet societal needs. And whereas engineers face the major technical challenges of our time, from rebuilding towns devastated by natural disasters, cleaning up the environment, and assuring a safe, clean, and efficient sources of energy, to designating information systems that will speed our country into the future. And whereas engineers are changing the world all the time, they dream up creative, practical solutions and work with teams of smart, inspiring people to invent, design, and create things that matter. And whereas National Engineers Week was established in 1951 to help increase public understanding of the engineering profession, and as we imagine tomorrow, engineers will be at the heart of the solutions to combat climate change, secure cyberspace, develop vaccines, and make the world a better place for all of us. Now, therefore, be it resolved that I, David L. Brummel, Mayor of the City of Warrenville, proclaim February 19th through the 25th, 2023, as Engineers Week, and applaud the engineers working for and with the City of Warrenville for the significant contributions they make to enhance the quality of life for all Warrenville citizens by providing for their health, safety, and welfare and our engineers do a phenomenal job built and you're at the head of the whole operation. So thank you. That's for you. And you're welcome to speak. Well, on behalf of the three professional engineers we have on city staff and also the various engineering consultants that we utilize, uh, we all enjoy working for and with the city of Warrenville. And um, thank you for recognizing National Engineers Week. Great. Thank you. And is our, as our practice during our budget preparation season, we have a presentation by Community Development Department for the FY 2024 budget presentation this evening. And we have Community and Economic Deve Development Director Ron Mentzer here tonight to make this presentation. And always so many interesting things going on. Um, once we get past the electronic limitations. Good evening, Ron. Good evening. Thank you, Mayor. And good evening to the entire city council. Believe it or not, after 28 years, I've gotten to the point in my career that I genuinely appreciate and value being here and being able to make this presentation um, to you. 
Uh, and that's true. Doesn't mean I enjoy it. <laughs> uh, preparing for it anyway, I don't enjoy it. But uh, I'm glad to be here and uh, have another year of presenting all the things that the Community Development Department has been working on and will be hopefully working on next fiscal year. So to start, the goal is to uh, give you an overview of the challenges that the Community Development Department has been working through, uh, not just for this current fiscal year, but uh, some of these challenges and, and situations have existed for a period of time now. Um, I'll then jump into what the department's identified as its most important uh, and impactful accomplishments over the current fiscal year. And then we'll look forward to next fiscal year, talk about the priorities that we've identified and included in our proposed work plan for next year. Um, along the way, I'm gonna definitely provide some facts, figures, um, some data, you might say, that will hopefully you'll find informative and useful as you work through the budget process. Um, and I will definitely make a point of touching on the seven new decision packages that the Community Development Department staff has put together and are part of the budget submittal that we uh, provided to uh, the Finance Department and Administration Department for next fiscal year. So from a, a challenge standpoint, the, there's four items that these are the same four items that we've been dealing with uh, to some extent for the past four years. And individually, uh, they're, they're not a big deal, but collectively when you overlay these together, they do become a pretty significant challenge. And as I look back and prepare this uh, presentation, I can see how they really have had a meaningful impact on uh, where we spent our time, energy, and resources in the community development department over the past year and actually what we've been able to accomplish over the past year or so. Um, I'm not gonna go through them as I walk through the, the entire presentation. I'll cover a lot of these things. I don't wanna be too repetitive. Oops. So starting out with accomplishments, the, the first accomplishment I did wanna talk about is uh, department staffing. Um, our department has, uh, community development has nine full-time staff members and one half-time staff member. So nine and a half uh, people work in the community development department. Over the past two years, we've seen, or we've worked closely with administration department to recruit, hire, and onboard six staff members, full-time staff members, and one part-time staff member. That's after years and almost decades of a lot of stability in the department. Uh, so we've lost a lot of institutional knowledge. Uh, there were some pretty big gaps uh, over that period of time where we were recruiting and trying to find staff. Um, so it, that, the fact that we've had vacancy, that much vacancy and turnover in our department has definitely had a material impact on um, what people in the department have had to focus on a day-to-day -day basis. People have had to step up and fill in the gaps uh, in most cases, that happened organically. People volunteered. They didn't have to be asked or told. They just said, hey, I can do that. I'll do that. I see that it needs to get done. I think uh, collectively, we've been able to uh, continue to provide high-quality, personalized service and solutions to the community throughout that entire uh, the staffing transition that's been happening. This current fiscal year, we've had uh, three positions, full-time positions that we needed to fill. Um, we filled the city's chief code official position last summer after unexpected uh, vacancy developed. Um, last, late last summer, we filled the city's planner and GIS technician position again, uh, unexpected vacancy. Um, and then finally, last but not least, we've, we created and filled a new position, the permit and zoning technician, which we placed the administrative support position that Marie Lupo held for about 15 years down in the department. Um, all those people are on board doing great work for the community. Um, you know, there's still some institutional knowledge uh, gaps there, but uh, I can tell you that they're all uh, good fits with the culture of the department. They really enjoy working with the city of Warrenville. We're glad to have them aboard. Before I move on to the, the next slide and next accomplishment, I did want to take just a little brief left-hand turn here and acknowledge that one of the positions that we filled last fiscal year, about this time, was our Assistant Community Development Director position. 
uh, Consuelo Aguilas, and I'm going to take this opportunity to wish her an early uh, happy work anniversary. Tomorrow she'll have been with the city for one year, and I want to uh, extend appreciation on behalf of the city for all your hard work and commitment over the last year. I'm sure it's been a pretty crazy ride for you, especially given the vacancies of two positions that report directly to her. <laughs> so that's been a challenge. So she's done a great job over the last year. One of the other things that I think we've uh, been able to accomplish this year is just continuing to be very effective and thoughtful in the processing of all the building permits that uh, have been coming the city's way. Last year when I made this presentation, we were anticipating that there'd be a slight slowdown in permit activity. Um, I think the projections that we shared last year is that we were going to issue permits for approximately 20 new single family homes, uh, permits that would have a total construction value of about $17 million. Uh, and through those permits, the city would collect maybe like 230 or $240,000 worth of building permit revenue. The fact of the matter is, is that we've continued to see a pretty high level of construction and permit activity in the community. I think that's a great thing. Um, despite kind of economic uncertainties, rising interest rates, supply shortages, and everything else, it's all these crazy things that are happening in the economy at this point in time. Um, by the, the end of this fiscal year, we fully expect that we'll have issued permits for approximately 80 new single family homes. That's a combination of both detached and attached single family homes. Um, a total construction value this uh, fiscal year of about $29 million, collect over $400,000 worth of building permit revenue, um, 550 permits or more. So it's been a pretty successful year from a, a building permit perspective. Community development staff has also worked hard to um, oversee the completion and closeout of four significant residential projects that have been underway in the community for the past couple, three years. Uh, specifically, the first unit of the Lexington Trace and the Everton Townhouse projects out in the Southwest District were completed. Uh, down in Cantera, the Arden Apartment Project and the Wesleyan Apartment Projects were both completed and fully occupied um, this fiscal year. In total, those four projects alone contain more than 800 residential units, and we estimate that uh, now that they're fully occupied, there's probably somewhere in the neighborhood of 1,200 to 1,500 new residents uh, that occupy those developments. We've also been involved in processing a couple of new, fairly significant residential development projects this fiscal year. Um, the second phase of the Riverview West project was reviewed and approved by the city council, and we actually issued the building permits for all 60 built to rent townhouses in that project. Um, all of those units are under construction in some form or another at this point in time. We also processed the uh, second and third proposed units for to the uh, Lexington Trace project. Uh, the first unit was complete, had 106 units, and units two and three together have another 48 units, and by the end of this fiscal year, uh, we anticipate that we'll have issued the building permits for 30 of the 48 units in those two units. We also spent a considerable amount of time advancing a, a variety of city trail enhancement projects. Came in tonight, you can't help yourself but see the uh, progress that continues to be made on the trailhead project. Uh, I often find opportunities to walk through their project and I think it's a great addition to the community. Um, we expect that that project will be complete. Hopefully by the end of this fiscal year, it may bleed over to the first uh, month of uh, next fiscal year, but it's nearing completion and uh, it's taking a little longer than we anticipated, but uh, it's definitely looking good from my perspective. We've also spent a, a lot of time um, working with our consulting engineer and IDOT to finalize the preliminary design for the proposed Route 59 multi-use uh, path project, uh, which inc incorporates, would incorporate uh, a new multi-use trail 
along both sides of 59 between Batavia Road on the north and uh, Continental Drive on the south. Um, we've also spent a, a, an enormous amount of time and energy working on advancing the various components of the Mack Road bridge replacement and multi-use path improvement projects. Specifically, we were able to secure final approval from IDOT of the preliminary design plans for the project. Uh, we uh, entered into a contract and now are working with our design consultant to prepare the final engineering design plans for the project. And we're just getting ready to start in the next couple weeks the formal process to acquire the various easements and private property that would be required to construct that project. Another important city project was the uh, uh, is the future construction of a new elevated water tower, uh, storage tank, a new well, and a iron filtration facility out in the Southwest District. We worked closely with the Public Works Department to um, develop the design, refine the design, work through a uh, somewhat uh, complex uh, public uh, review process for that and ultimately we're able to <coughs> secure the city council's approval of the various zoning entitlements that are required uh, in order for the city to build those improvements and I think throughout that entire process I think we built a lot of uh, tr trust with the uh, residents that were very concerned about the uh, design and uh, um, orientation of that project uh, which we did respond <coughs> to their concerns effectively I think A couple of important city economic <laughs> development initiatives that we've advanced to some degree this past fiscal year uh, are worth noting. Uh, specifically, Old Town Redevelopment Site Number Two, the former Sitco property and the adjacent properties that the city owns to the north. <coughs> Excuse me. Uh, we were able to complete all of the site investigation activities that the Illinois EPA will require before we start doing any type of remediation work on the property. Uh, so we were able to check that box off. Uh, we worked through a public process that ultimately culminated in the city council's endorsement of a more detailed preliminary uh, redevelopment site plan for the project, which is the graphic that's illustrated on the uh, screen there. Uh, hap this happened last year, last summer, I should, last calendar year. Um, once we completed the preliminary site redevelopment uh, planning process, we moved into the uh, process to engage with a local engineering firm and a local planning firm to convert that site plan into a preliminary site engineering plan. We're currently working with that consultant to refine that en site engineering plan. We're also working with our environmental consultant to develop the final remediation plans for the property. Last but not least, I think a, a noteworthy accomplishment in this area is that we uh, worked with the Public Works Department, the city's traffic engineer, and the city council to implement a um, test or a trial at the time, three-way stop condition at the Batavia Road, Warrenville Road intersection. Ultimately, we then evaluated the uh, performance of that trial condition and the city council approved that trial condition to become a permanent condition, which is important for the, important to the future redevelopment of the site. Um, so that was a big accomplishment from my perspective. Last time, at this time, one of the decision packages that we talked about as part of the current year budget was uh, a decision package that uh, did get approved and provided funding that allows the city to hire a um, engineering and a planning consult or a planning and zoning consultant that would help the city develop a zoning overlay district set of amendments to our zoning ordinance uh, that would be designed in a manner that would help facilitate and support high quality incremental traditional pedestrian oriented. Um, infill development in the in and around the Old Town Civic Center sub area going forward. Um, last committee meeting, Consuelo presented the work group's recommendation on a preferred consultant for that assignment and we're actively uh, act 
actively working with that consultant to uh, develop a detailed scope of work and contract that will be brought back to the City Council for review and approval in the next few weeks. A couple of important regulatory upgrades that we were able to accomplish this fiscal year included the adoption of updated building and fire codes. Uh, we now have adopted, the city's adopted, and, and will be enforcing the most up-to-date national building and fire codes with some local amendments that are more reflective of uh, the same type of amendments that have been approved and are enforced in some of our surrounding communities, so we're more in line with the surrounding communities. Um, we did spend a lot of time working with the fire district to make sure that the fire district's concerns and interests were reflected in the, the, the codes that we adopted, and uh, the, the fire district is in full support of the, uh, the new codes and amendments that the city is now going to be enforcing. Last summer, uh, the city council approved an ordinance that uh, as of the first of this year, bans the use of coal tar sealant products in the city of Warrenville. Um, over the latter part of last calendar year, uh, community development staff worked hard to get the word out about those new restrictions and licensing requirements for sealant contractors. Uh, we communicated with over 300 commercial property owners, homeowners associations, um, ceiling contractors, and property managers about those regulations so that they all had a proactive understanding of what uh, those restrictions meant to them and how they went about, um, how they would go about in getting the proper licenses uh, necessary to uh, perform seal coating work in the city of Warrenville going forward. So looking towards next year, um, some of the most important priorities that we've incorporated into our work program include uh, positioning the city in a manner that we can move forward with a couple of the remaining outstanding trail improvement enhancement projects. Specifically, uh, we wanna make sure that the city is in a position to move forward with the Mack Road bridge replacement and trail project. Um, the construction of that project um, our goal would be for that to happen sometime late spring of 2024. Uh, in order for that to happen, we developed a decision package, which is uh, hopefully going to be part of the uh, budget uh, that you'll be receiving from the finance department here in the next week or two. And that decision package would provide $980,000 worth of funding, which would cover the city's share of the construction related costs of that project. <clears throat> Uh, our goal is to put the city in a position that it could move forward with the Route 59 sidewalk multi-use path improvement project that I spoke of earlier. In sometime in, construct that sometime in uh, 2025. In order to do that, we've developed a decision package that uh, would allocate $100,000 worth of funding. Um, that funding would be used next, this coming fiscal year to uh, for the city to acquire the various easements that would be necessary in order to implement that project. Our goal as it relates to Old Town Redevelopment Site number two is to put the city in a position um, to actually begin remediation activities on that property this fall, fall of 2023. Uh, so that we could secure, work through all the IEPA bureaucracy and uh, uh, reporting requirements uh, with the goal of being able to secure a no further remediation letter from the Illinois EPA um, by the end of September of 2024. In order to do that, this coming fiscal year, we need to finalize a property exchange improvement agreement with the ownership of the Voltel property. Um, that's something that's a high priority early on in uh, fiscal year 23 or fiscal year 24. Um, we've developed a decision package that would allocate $120,000 that the city would use to cover the remediation costs associated with properly closing out the open leaking underground storage tank incidents on the property. It's important to note that uh, we have to front that those costs but we would receive reimbursement from the IEPA LUST program for about 70% of those costs. Uh, so the city's costs will actually be substantially less than the $120,000 that we're going to budget. We've also um, prepared and submitted a decision package for next year that would allocate $500,000 of funding 
that would be used to complete all of the remaining remediation that needs to be performed on the property, not including the leaking underground storage stuff. Um, and uh, that, um, that work would include all the heavy metals that are scattered throughout the site and any other uh, chemical remediation that needs to be performed on the site. Um, it's important to note from my perspective that the city did receive a no interest partially forgivable revolving loan commitment from the uh, IAPA's Office of Brownfields Assistance. And while we have to budget and spend the money to do the remediation to get the uh, NFR letter, a lot of those costs will be reimbursed by that no interest partially forgivable revolving loan fund. Once we complete those and that work, we can submit for reimbursement. We ultimately will have to pay a big part of that back over a period of like 10 years going forward once that work is complete. And then finally, last but not least on that property, um, if you've driven, a, and I know Claire, I used to see her when I would ride my bike on Batavia Road, travels up and down Batavia Road on a regular basis. And if you look into the section of the city owned property off of Batavia Road, um, you probably have noticed that the uh, former Wangren garage is looking a little tattered and weathered. And uh, so we've included some money in this year's budget to uh, move forward with it. We've included money in proposed fiscal year 24 budget that would allow us to demolish that garage. Um, we have an agreement with the fire district that they use it for storage and training activities, but in the preliminary conversations I've had with the fire chief, that's really not something that's really a need for them at this point in time, and they understand that the condition of the building is such that somebody's going to have to invest into it if it's going to remain and ultimately is going to be torn down, so it would be somewhat short-sighted to invest a lot of money to, to rehab the building. Um, looking forward to next fiscal year, uh, we anticipate that we're going to continue to see a relatively high level of uh, building permit activity based on all the interactions we've had with builders and developers um, at this point in time. It seems like there's uh, Warrenville continues to be a very desirable place uh, to invest into. And uh, we fully expect, unless something crazy, crazy happens with the economy, that uh, we'll see a pretty significant level of building permit activity next fiscal year. I'm not going to run through all this, but what I can tell you is that the takeaway here is that we've been having a lot of conversations. Almost every piece of developable property in the city of Warrenville, somebody's talking about doing something on. Um, these are a list of some of the more significant projects that we've been communicating with. Uh, that we fully expect that at least a handful of these will find their way through and into the city's zoning entitlement process next fiscal year. So we fully expect that uh, from a zoning perspective, we're going to continue to be uh, busy next year processing some of these development proposals. Which brings me to my last formal slide, uh, just a handful of additional things that we are intending to focus energy and, and resources on accomplishing next fiscal year. Um, talked about a little bit earlier in the presentation about the zoning overlay district that we're getting ready to move forward with. Um, the goal is to be in a position about this time next year to have completed uh, working through that whole planning public input process and have the city council be in a position where they can make a decision on uh, approving, hopefully approving some pretty significant changes to our zoning ordinance uh, going forward. One of the things that has been in and out carried over for a long period of time in our department work pro program is uh, working towards the implementation of the first phase of a mandatory rental registration and inspection program. There always seems to be other things that come up every year that prevent us from advancing that. Um, we've had a lot of discussion over the f past few months about positioning ourselves in a manner that we can move forward with uh, having the city council make a final decision on whether or not to implement that program. And if that decision is such that uh, the council agrees that it makes sense to implement that program, we would like to have that adopted and begin the implementation of the program uh, effective at the beginning of calendar year 2024. So just less than a year from now. In order to do that, we've developed a decision package and um, 
uh, that proposes to allocate about $24,000 worth of funding that would cover the costs that the city would incur, which are mostly staff human resource type costs to actually implement that program and do all the inspection work that's associated with it. It is important to note that when you see that decision package, there is a uh, coinciding revenue side of the equation. I would describe this program as a program that staff anticipates would be a self-funding program. So the structure of the program and the fees that go along would go along with that program um, would be more than enough to cover the costs that we would incur to actually implement and administer the program. <clears throat> and then uh, one of the most important uh, uh, initiatives that we uh, feel that we need to definitely move forward with is performing a special census in certain areas of the community. Uh, this is really important from a fiscal standpoint for the city. Um, there are probably somewhere in the neighborhood of 1,200 to 1,500 uh, new residents that have moved into the new residential projects that have uh, been completed or, or, under, or ongoing in the city. Um, that were not captured in the 2020 census because the units weren't complete and occupiable when the 2020 census was complete. For every one of those residents that we can capture in a special census, the city would receive approximately $240 per year going forward on an annual basis. So if we have, if we're able to do a special census and capture thousand new residents we're talking about every year receiving two hundred and forty thousand dollars worth of additional state shared revenue um, we capture fifteen hundred people it's just exponentially more <clears throat> moving forward the special census is not cheap by any means the decision package that we have put together um, includes would allocate about one hundred and fifty thousand uh, dollars not about I allocate one hundred and fifty five one hundred and fifty thousand dollars to cover the city's costs of moving forward with that process. But as I mentioned, um, we're gonna recoup those costs year one after we perform that special census. is gonna present some more information about the census, special census process at the upcoming Community Development Committee meeting. So if you have more questions about the details of that, she'll be prepared to address those uh, at that time. Uh, there's a couple of uh, fairly significant citywide initiatives that Community Development Department will definitely play an important role in. Um, as you know, we're kind of in the, the midst of transitioning on the ERP. We were on the Community Development Department was on the front line of trying to implement the ERP. We were the guinea pigs for Mazic, Mazic City they were creating for us and it was a challenge for us. So we're looking forward to, to uh, moving forward with a different ERP provider, vendor, uh, but it will definitely require a lot of uh, uh, time and effort, both on our department and across City Hall. And then strategic planning, um, that's a citywide effort. Uh, I think it's really important and uh, the department will definitely play a, a significant and important role in uh, helping to facilitate the process that will end up resulting in the City Council's endorsement of a new strategic plan for the community going forward. Last but not least, there's one community enhancement project. Didn't know where else to put it in the, the, uh, pr uh, the presentation. We have developed a decision package that would allocate $40,000 that would allow us to move forward with the construction of a new masonry city entrance sign on the east side of Route 59, just north of the Illinois Prairie Path. There used to be a small wooden sign that was there that got uh, removed when the Duke Parkway Route 59 intersection improvements were constructed. Um, as part of the Everton project, we were able to negotiate um, an easement on Everton's property. Um, they landscaped an area around it and graded it accordingly to accommodate the city's construction of a new um, masonry sign that would be similar in design to the masonry sign that we constructed at the very west edge of the community on the south side of Butterfield Road and um, just south of the Winfield Road, Butterfield Road intersection on the west side of Winfield Road. Uh, so we're looking forward to implementing that and kind of reestablishing the city's identi identity to those traveling into the community from the south. With that, I would like to uh, thank you all from the bottom of my heart. Um,
includes city staff for all the work that they've done uh, this year and all the, the time that I've been here. Um, it's been uh, amazing to see all the, the positive transformation that's happened in the community that would not have been able to happen in the form that it's been able to happen um, in a kind of a small time, small town mentality that we interact personally with the people in the community. We provide solutions. We try to do government right, as the mayor says. That's the culture of the city, and we've been able to accomplish a lot through uh, a lot of transition in the department. And uh, it's been an amazing ride. And when you look back on it, it's, it's uh, very rewarding to be part of that. And uh, that wouldn't have happened without the dedication and commitment of all the staff throughout City Hall, but especially in the community development over the last couple of years and the continuous support of the City Council. The City Council um, consistently uh, trusts staff and provides staff with the resources that they need to continue to develop professionally and um, be an important resource to actually implement the vision and goals that you have. So thank you. Thank you, Brian. Well said. Um, it always amazes me the amount and the quality of work that comes from your department. Um, you've played a pivotal role in the development of Warrenville over the last 28 years, and it's hard to travel to any part of the community that you haven't touched in a positive way and left your mark. So at some point when you're gone, you gotta come back and visit and see how things are blossoming in your absence. But you've, laid, you've planted a lot of seeds a lot of good things, uh, again, in conjunction with your staff and the elected officials. We're very, very fortunate to have such a, a talented, hardworking team. And uh, just, again, looking at the things that you accomplished already and you anticipate accomplishing in the future, it's remarkable. If people think that a small town is just a small town and nothing happens, they need to come here and see what happens in a small town if it's done right. And you've played a huge role in making that happen. So thank you so much. Thank you. Questions or comments from the council? Yeah, Alderman Goodman. I want to thank you for your thorough and interesting presentation, Ron. Um, I know putting all this information together is a lot of work, and I appreciate it. Um, I did have a, a, a question or two about uh, some of the projects that you, you talked about but didn't get into um, some, some detail. Uh, for example, when you... Um, when you talked about the rental registration and inspection program, I know we've seen this on agendas and, and long-term work plans for years, and you talked about how there's been a lot of discussion about how we can move that forward. Maybe this is a silly question, but is this really going to move forward? Are we going to do it this time? Well, I, I believe we have a full staff for the most part right now. Not for the most part. We have a full staff right now. Um, and we have been talking about it and preparing to have discussions with, there's a work group that the city council's established. I think Alderman Barry and Alderman Asher are on that work group. We've done a lot of research and have kind of a framework of what this program will look like. Um, so yeah, I, I believe that we'll be in a position to facilitate a decision by the city council on whether or not to move forward. And then it's a matter of once that decision's made, it's kind of on a, on a bigger scale. It's similar to the, uh, um, uh, coal tar ban ordinance, get a decision made, and then prepare to implement the, the process. So we want to try to work through the decision process in the first half of fiscal year 24 so that come calendar year 24, we'll be able to actually implement that program. And we're going to start out, is it's a phased implementation. So the goal and what we would be proposing in a more formal uh, format to the city council is a a phase program where we're going to focus on the larger uh, multi-unit apartment buildings as the first phase. Um, there's a large number of units, but a lot of them are new, so they won't require a lot of work for us to deal with. And most of those larger uh, apartment buildings are managed and maintained by a professional management organization, so they're used to dealing with municipalities. So we probably will have know, maybe 15 or 20, maybe 30 individuals to deal with on the implementation of the first phase, uh, where the second phase is where we would deal with all the individual random rental units that are scattered throughout the community. And as you might imagine, there's 
hundreds and hundreds of individuals that we're going to have to deal. So the goal would be to kind of cut our teeth, um, refine the administrative and licensing process during the first phase so that when we roll out the second phase, which that will be up to somebody else to figure out when that happens, um, it will we'll be in a better place to do that effectively. We'll have learned lessons through that first phase implementation. Okay, and in terms of the decision, which I know is going to be up to you know, account, the council at, at a future time, what kind of um, feedback have you gotten from either renters or landlords about a desire for this program uh, and antipathy toward the idea of the program? Just, you know, what have you been hearing? We haven't, we haven't got really any feedback because we haven't got to the point of having any public meetings about it. Um, of late, so I wouldn't want to misrepresent that we have any real-time feedback from anybody about it. Um, I think the feedback we're going to get will, to a certain extent, depend on the structure of the program that we present publicly. Um, in my opinion, we want to make sure that we're fair in structuring that program. Um, for example, all the new units, they, they don't need to be inspected nearly at the same level and rate and frequency as some of the older units in the community that you know, obviously have gotten to that point in their life where maintenance is a more serious issue for them. Um, if we treat them all the same in a program, we're probably going to get some pretty harsh feedback. Um, so I think it's structuring that program to be fair and equitable. Um, that's going to be a key to, to rolling out effectively. Okay, okay. Well, I'm sure this is going to be talked about quite a lot more, especially if we really do get going on it. And I'm sure there's going to be, you know, a lot of other um, places to get information from as you go along. But I haven't been on that work group, so I haven't heard anything about these ongoing discussions. So I just wanted to hear a little bit more about that. Um, I guess the, the only other main question that I have has to do with the Route 59 sidewalk multi-use path mm -hmm. improvement project. I mean, you talked about that a little bit and said that we're just um, sort of doing the first part, the 100,000 for easement acquisition in this year. Uh, what other work needs to be done ahead of time that, that is making this uh, project delayed till 2025? Okay, so right now we're in the process of trying to um, finalize the preliminary engineering design plans for the project. Um, been working with IDOT and in our consultant, as I mentioned. Uh, once we get IDOT to approve the preliminary engineering design plans for the project, um, we can move forward with final engineering design for the project. This, the budget for this fiscal year uh, included funds to move forward with the final engineering design. We're just, we haven't been able to secure IDOT's approval of the preliminary engineering, so that's going to be rebudgeted or carried over. I say carried over, budget. <laughs> Kevin will remind me, there's no such thing. <laughs> Carrying things over in a budget, you gotta rebudget it. Um, so we're gonna rebudget the final engineering design costs into next year. So that's one of the main things that we're gonna focus on next, next, next fiscal year along with the property acquisition activities so that we can position ourselves in a manner to, to uh, construct this sometime in calendar year 2025. Okay, so it, it really hasn't gotten that much further along than anything we've heard about it so no. far, even though the, the money was budgeted and the approval from the council was that's already. That's correct. Okay, that, that's good to know. I mean, delays from IDOT, that does not surprise me <laughs> in the least to hear that that's what's slowing this down at all. Um, maybe I should have known that before I even asked the question. Yeah. Okay, thank you. Yeah, you're welcome. Uh, Alderman Barry. Um, I just want to thank you, Ron, for the um, <clears throat> very great presentation. It's um, always enjoyable to hear what the uh, Community Development Department has to say regarding the budget. But the um, amazing thing to me is, is that there's uh, so many different things that we have accomplished this year that sometimes when we sit up here, we don't always mm -hmm. remember all the things. So it's great that you can bring us bring that to us again. But it's uh, also amazing is that the things that are projected for um, this coming year. Um, I like that you have all these decision packages and, and especially the um, rental registration and inspection program. I know that Alderman <coughs> Ashour and myself have been waiting for a long time for this to happen. I'm thinking it's probably been at least 10 years 
that we've talked about this. So that's uh, great to see. I also like the list of projects. Um, sometimes we don't realize how many different things are available in the city where things can be developed and built, and um, which will make our city even greater than it already is. So thanks again for everything that a community development does and every all the staff members at City Hall. Okay, thank you very much, Ron. As always, excellent. Okay, we'll move on to the part of our meeting that's uh, set aside for citizens' comments. We have one person signed up this evening, Mr. Bob Siebert. Bob Siebert, Albright Court, Cantera generated about $1.8 million in property taxes in 2010. What if we applied the Bears' proposal to Cantera? The property tax would drop to $900,000 from 2010 to 2022, the city of Warrenville would have lost more than $11 million. How do we know this? The yearly increase in EAV from 1994 to 2009 increased by 100%. That's one half of the property tax revenue from the original construction costs and one half from the annual compounded increases in EAV. This results because there is no tax cap in TIFs. This is basically the reason why the Chicago Bears do not want a TIF on their stadium. They know the increases in annual compounded rates. They would be paying this. They want a set rate for 40 years. <clears throat> the second effect that occurs is the citizens, the taxpayers, the EAV is not included in the determination of the yearly tax rate. Thus, the Bears proposal would shift more taxes annually to the other taxpayers. However, in the residential and the corporate section of the development, Chicago Bears want a TIF. They want a TIF because now they realize additional large amounts of money will be produced by the property taxpayers. Those taxpayers would be the new residents and the new business owners and the bears would be the recipients for their infrastructure costs from these other individuals. In other states where this has been passed, generally the industries are utilities where pricing and profit are regulated. The key element here is this is all occurring because of not having a tax cap in the TIF district. This affects our individuals on Ray Street, where we have on one side of the street a tax cap, and on the other side of the street, no tax cap. And then we see 90-year-old residential buildings 
paying thousands and thousands of dollars in the annual increases. Thank you, Bob. We'll move on to official and staff comments, beginning with the mayor. Just one thing, a reminder that this coming Wednesday, March 1st, is our annual State of the City Address, which will happen right here in the council chambers beginning at 6 p.m. Everyone is invited to attend in person. Um, it's always a fun discussion that we have. We have a presentation that I think you'll find interesting and at the end, we always end with a question and answer period where it's like 50 to one against me and I see if I can hold my own, but it's always fun and lively. So you're invited to join us and uh, see if you can stump the mayor this time around. Um, if not, at least get a bunch of information about what's happening in the community, what uh, has happened, what is going to happen along the lines of what Ron presented this evening. Uh, but you get a little closer uh, look at what's happening in Warrenville. So you're all invited. March 1st, Wednesday evening, here at City Council Chambers, 6 o'clock, be there. Um, I will, so join me. Uh, that's all I have. Clerk? Okay. Uh, treasurer isn't available yet. Alderman? Okay. Uh, city Administrator is not with us. City Attorney? Thank you. Thank you, Brooke. We'll move on to the approval of the agenda for this evening. Who would like to make that? Alderman Kruckenberg? Second. Second by Alderman Ashauer. Uh, any changes to that agenda suggested by anyone? Okay. Seeing none, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. The agenda is approved as presented. We have some minutes that need approval also. Alderman Kruckenberg, would you like to make that motion? I'd like to make a motion to approve the minutes of the February 6th, 2023 City Council regular meeting. And also approve the minutes of the February 13th, 2023 Public Works and Infrastructure Committee meeting. Second. Second by Alderman Goodman. Any discussion on those minutes? Again, seeing none, all in favor? Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. The minutes approved as presented. All right, sit back, get comfortable. Here we go on the consent agenda. Item 6A. Accept plan commission recommendation, waive second reading and pass ordinance 02023-02, approving a final plan of subdivision for uh, of subdivision of Warrenville Public Works resubdivision number three. B, accept staff recommendation, excuse me, um, waive second reading and pass ordinance 02023-03, adopting and publishing a revised zoning district map 2000 23 for the city of Warrenville. C, accept senior civil engineer Hawking's recommendation and pass resolution R2023-08, approving the reduction of the public improvement security bond to maintenance for the Lexington Trace Unit 1 subdivision, accepting the bill of sale and placing the project into the two-year maintenance period. D, accept public works and infrastructure committee recommendation and pass resolution R2023-09, approving an agreement with All Information Services Incorporated, AIS, for a 12-month term at an annual cost of $104,496. E, accept Public Works and Infrastructure Committee recommendation and pass resolution R2023-10, approving the temporary license agreement with Lexington Homes, LLC, for a construction trailer with the Brayman Court right-of-way, within the Brayman Court right-of-way. F, accept Public Works and Infrastructure Committee recommendation and pass resolution R2023-11, approving the amended local agency uh, agreement with IDOT for federal participation funds in the amount of $419,258 that will be cost shared with $268,723 of STP funds and $150,535 with local funds. G, accept Public Works and Infrastructure Committee recommendation and pass resolution R2023-12, approving the joint funding agreement for state-led construction work for the Batavia Road resurfacing project and committing to funding the city share of the project. H, accept Public Works and Infrastructure Committee recommendation and pass resolution R2023-13, approving a three-year agreement with Plotheris, close enough, for newspaper printing services. 
I accept public uh, safety and uh, finance committee recommendation and approve the Warrenville Historical Society's grant request in the amount of $20,000 from the hotel tax fund to cover the cost of their part-time museum director and curator and direct staff to include this funding in the FY 2024 budget. J, accept public safety and finance committee recommendation and approve the Tourism Arts Commission recommendations and award $138,896.74 in hotel tax grant funding to various applicants for the FY 2024 per the uh, Tourism and Arts Commission memo dated January 13th, 2023, and direct staff to include this funding in the FY 2024 budget. K, accept public safety and finance committee recommendation and approve the Tourism and Arts Commission recommendation to award $6,642.88 in hotel tax funds for capital improvements to the Warren Tavern building per the Tourism and Arts Commission memo dated January 13, 2023, and direct staff to include this funding in the FY 2024 budget. L, accept public safety and finance committee recommendation and award up to uh, $3,357 in hotel tax funds to assist the Warren Tavern in covering its liability insurance premium due FY 2024 and direct staff to include this funding in the FY 2024 budget. M, accept public safety and finance committee recommendation and approve the police department's request to solicit donations for all calendar year 2023 events, including National Night Out Against Crime and Special Olympics Illinois Law Enforcement Torch Run events. And accept Public Works and Infrastructure Committee recommendation and direct staff to proceed with a general obligation bond issuance as presented by Spear Financial on, the February, on February 13th, 2023. O, accept Public Works and Infrastructure Committee recommendation and designate Coda Metrics as a preferred consultant for the City's Zoning Overlay District Initiative. P, accept Public Works and Infrastructure Committee recommendation and authorize staff to advertise for bids for the 2023 construction projects outlined in Public Works Director Kukler's February 8, 2023 mem memorandum prior to former approval of the fiscal year 2024 budgets. Q, receive and file of the 2022 Annual Reports of the Plan Commission and Zoning Board of Appeals. R, receive and file FY 2024 Work Plan for the Plan Commission and Zoning Board of Appeals. S, receive and file minutes of the Bicyclist and Pedestrian Commission meeting held on November 8th, 2022. T, receive and file minutes of the Bicyclist and Pedestrian Commission meeting held on January 10th, 2023. You receive and file minutes of the Plan Commission Zoning Board of Appeals meeting held uh, on February 9th, 2023. V, receive and file reports of invoices paid up to February 15th, 2023 in the amount of $26,890.80. W, authorize expenditures for invoices due on or before March 6th, 2023 in the amount of $188,000. $661.22. Alderman Quickenberg. I'd like to make a motion to approve the consent agenda items as read by Mayor Brummel. Second. Second by Alderman Ashauer. May I have a roll call, please? Alderman Krishel. Aye. Alderman Ashauer. Aye. Alderman Kruckenberg. Aye. Alderman Berry. Aye. And Alderman Goodman. Aye. Motion carries and the consent agenda is approved for this evening. We have no items under the regular agenda. Nothing listed for unfinished business that needs to be attended to this evening. No new business that is being recommended for our attention. No need for a closed session. Only the need for one final motion. Alderman Goodman. I move to adjourn. Second. Second by Alderman on the end down there. <laughs> Alderman Jeff. <laughs> Sorry, Jeff. I hate it when those senior moments hit you with your respect. You know. <laughs> well, it looks like we're adjourned. All in favor? Aye. Uh, opposed? We are adjourned officially. Thank you for your attention this evening. We'll see you next time around.
This conference is no longer being recorded.